Look with me now in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 4, and a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines. A champion went out. Verse 23, three times in this chapter, it emphasizes the champion. Verse 23, then as he talked with them, there was the champion of the Philistines. And then in verse 51, David ran, stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of his sheath, and killed him and cut off it, his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Verse 52, now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines. Uh, Saul was having a lot of personal problems. He was the first king of Israel. He was in a backslidden condition, going to a psychic, going to a witch, dabbling in the occult. He had lost the anointing. He had lost the voice of God in his life. And so now he's turning to any and everything. And as sin always does, it takes you deeper and deeper and deeper into despair, depression, was overwhelming him. He was, he was insane almost with depression. And while in that vulnerable moment, the leadership of Israel is uh, distracted, preoccupied with his own battles, the enemy slipped in to the promised land. The Philistines came to the Valley of Eli and they set up a war camp and there was a giant named Goliath who began to walk out and taunt the armies of Israel. Now they are terrified at the giant who's stepping out every morning and every night saying, send me a champion. Send me a champion. I'm the champion of the Philistines and I will fight. And if I lose, then you win and we will serve you if I win, then you will serve us. The Bible gives very graphic details of the armor and in great detail that the giant Goliath wore, specifically the coat of nails. One translation said it was, it was a coat of, of metal scales. Oh, that's interesting that he wore a coat of scales. Goliath is a picture of the serpent. Goliath is, is a picture of the serpent that defeated Adam and Eve in the garden. That's why the prophecy in the garden was the seed of woman will crush the head of the serpent. David is the descendant of Jesus. Let me explain that. The Bible said that David is the root and offspring, the book of Revelation says. The root and offspring of David. What does that mean? How can you be the root and the offspring? He was the root, meaning he was there before David, and yet he, his, on his mother's side, Mary, came as the offspring and provided the physical body that God would show up in. And so David is the descendant of Jesus, and David goes out and defeats Goliath with a head wound. Jesus would go to the cross to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, and he would defeat Satan, the scaly one, the serpent, that old serpent, the devil. Every day for 40 days, Goliath issues the same challenge. Whoever the champion of Israel is, and he, he did two things. He blasphemed God's name. The Bible says this over and over and over. He blasphemed the name of the Lord, and then he would issue the challenge. Send me a champion if you want to do something about it. And whoever wins this, this is not army against army. Listen carefully. This is not the Israeli army against the, the Philistine army. It is one-on-one -on -one combat. Champion against champion. And it just so happens on the 40th day that David is sent by his father from the fields of shepherding to go take bread and cheese to his brothers on the 40th day. And when David hears this uncircumcised, meaning out of covenant, has no covenant with God, because that was a sign of, uh, of the blood covenant that God made with Abraham and all the Israeli people. 
And when he hears this giant cursing and blaspheming God's name, something comes all over him. He was passionate about the name of the Lord. And he turns and he's astounded and he said, why doesn't anybody go shut him up? He's cursing and blaspheming our God's name. And he says these powerful words, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? When David heard those words, immediately Eliab, his older brother, started attacking him, saying, you need to go back to those little sheep that you take care of. This is a man's world right here. And he says, it's almost comical. He says, I'll fight. I'll fight him. Nobody in the army would do it. Saul was in his tent hiding, and he goes to the tent of the king. It's ridiculous. And he goes inside, and he says, I'll do it. And the king says, you're too young. He says, no, I'm not. I'll tell you what, I know I can do it. You know why I know I can do it? Because I was watching my sheep and a lion came and I slew him with my slingshot and a bear came and I slew him with, my, with, with, with that same rock and sling. Saul thinks that victory comes through the weapons. So he says, okay, I'm gonna let you go but I know you're going to need my sword and my spear and all my armor. You take it. And David says, I, I can't use that, but I'm deadly with this rock and this sling. I know it doesn't look like much, and, but I'm telling you, I've watched this work. You may feel like sometimes you don't have much, but I've watched prayer work. I've watched the blood of Jesus work. I've watched God take the toughest, roughest, baddest situations and turn them around. And so there's something about the person who, who's seen it happen before. You've watched God raise you. You've watched God bless you. You've watched God preserve you. You've watched God defend you. You've watched God do so many things. And the brilliance of God is the Israelites were trained in warfare just like the Philistines to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that would have been sure enough suicide because nobody can defeat Goliath in size. Nobody can de defeat Goliath in strength. Nobody can defeat Goliath in skill with sword and with spear and with shield. It would be suicide to do it, but the brilliance of God is I'm going to take an unlikely champion, an unlikely person, and it doesn't look like they've got much of a weapon, but they've been with me. They've been out in the wilderness. They've been strumming the harp, and you know what he had been doing out there? Writing songs, like Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me. Mm. I think when he started going out with nothing but a slingshot and a rock, he started reminding, maybe singing this song, he leads me, he's leading me. He's leading me into this battle. He's for me, he's with me. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I like the rest of Psalms 23. He, 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 he was, when, when the giant finished talking trash, he said, now it's my turn to talk some trash. And the reason he was so confident is because he said, I have two bodyguards. You can't see them. He said, the name of my bodyguards is God's goodness and God's mercy. They follow me all the days of my life, Psalms 23. They, goodness and mercy follow me all God's I want you to know that's a powerful thing no matter what you're going through this morning when you understand I'm surrounded. You can't see them, but I've got two bodyguards, God's goodness. He's still a good God. No matter what has happened, no matter how bad things have gone, he's good and his mercy. Ooh, that's good. His mercy endures forever. And three times, three times, it says there went out a champion. There went down a champion. The word champion, and then the third time, their champion was dead. 
and they ran and fled. The word champion is translated the man in between. Isn't that amazing? The word champion that's found three times in 1 Samuel 17 is translated the man who stands in between. He stands in between you and your enemy. What an insight. And so far, you've heard this story so far. It's what you expected. Great story. Great thing. Defeat the giant. And always in Bible stories, we put ourselves in the position of the winner that's going against the odds. That's just common nature. When I read it, I put myself, I'm David. I'm David against my Goliath. I'm Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm this, I'm that. And, and, and we all do that. And the way we end it is like, you know, I'm David, and Goliath represents great problems, and, and you know, the story always ends with a happy ending. The story always ends with, with I won, and, and the problem lost, and Happily ever after, I'm always victorious, just like David. Yay! You just read the titles of books on this story. How to slay your giant. How to kill, how to, how to raise giant killers. How to, how, to, how to, 10 ways to slay your giant. Seven, seven things to do if you want to kill your Goliath. And on and on and on. And I get it. I preached it. I understand it. But I think we miss the whole point of this story sometimes. You are not David. The truth is, we always preach it. You're David. You always win. Goliath is the problem. It always loses. But if we are honest, this is the point I was trying to get to. <laughs> it's not always quite so simple. Giants tend to be fierce. And we tend not to be David. We tend to be fickle soldiers down in the trenches shaking or hiding in the tent like Saul. We don't, we don't put ourselves over there. We put ourselves like, yeah, I'm going to be a David. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 10, it lists all these failure, 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 story after story after story of failures. And then it says all of these things were written for our example. And then he says this in verse 12. Wherefore, here's why he said I just listed all that. He said, therefore, let him who thinks he stands, who thinks that they're a conqueror, they're a champion, they're a winner, let him, he said, I, I let all these people, I put all these people who failed and messed up in some area, did something terrible. I put them all there. It was for your example to read it. And then he says, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And boy, I just, I'm just telling you, I'm always the winner when I think about it. When I read the Bible, I have a tendency to think of myself, and you do too, so don't look crazy at me. I'm always innocent Abel. I'm never hateful Cain. I'm always loyal Abraham. I'm never greedy Lot. I'm always good Joseph. I'm never the conniving brother. I'm always holy Moses up on the mountain with God. I'm never the rebellious backing it up on the golden calf, dancing and partying and smoking weed. I'm always the three Hebrew children not bowing to the pressures of culture and political correctness. I'm never in my mind with that group that bows down as soon as the trumpet sounds and a little pressure comes. I'm always one of the disciples that follows Jesus. I'm always that Simon Peter who says, yo, thou art the Christ. None of these get it, but I know and I'll fight for you and I'll die for you. I'm never, I deny him, I deny him, I deny him. I, that, that's never me. But the truth is, uh-oh, can we be honest? In my mind, I'm always fearless David running toward Goliath, 
Never the king shaking in cowardness, afraid for his life, panicked, scared. But here's what I came to preach. You're not the hero. You are not the champion. You are the rebel. Sometimes you're the coward. Sometimes I'm the Pharisee. Sometimes I'm the bad guy. Sometimes I'm the victim. Sometimes I'm the loser. Sometimes I'm the sinner. Sometimes I'm the failure. I'm going to preach it. Sometimes I'm the liar. Sometimes I'm the loser. And if you can't accept that, if you can't admit that, you're missing half of the gospel. The Bible is not a book about how you are the champion. I want to say it again. Man is not the champion. That's the lie the serpent told Adam and Eve in the garden. If you eat the fruit, you'll be like God. You'll be a champion. No, I am not the champion. The message is I have a champion. I'm sitting up on the mountain of fear. I'm sitting in the mountain of failure, shaking in my own timidity and, and, and uh, afraid and scared and, and weak and tired of dealing with the problem. You say, well, what about Romans chapter 8? Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. Quote the rest of the verse. Through him. Through him. Through him. On your own, you're not a hero. On your own, you're not great. On your own, you're not a champion. You don't need to awaken the champion in you. You need to awaken yourself to the champion who is for you, and his name is Jesus. He is your champion. You don't always have to be right. You don't always have to do perfect. You don't always have to be everything that you're trying to be because I have a champion, and the battle is not won or lost according to the soldiers sitting in both camps. It's won by the champion, and whichever champion wins, that means the army takes the victory. Listen to what Romans 5 and verse 6 says. It's so powerful. And when we were still without strength, you're not the champion. When we were still without strength, I'm preaching to people who are so weary from the battles that they've been fighting that you that could be where you are right now and I'm telling you the Lord wants me to make sure you leave knowing this that you are not the champion and no matter how weak you feel for when we were still without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly Romans 16 said, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. You know what? Jesus, David went out and cut Goliath's head off. Jesus on the cross cut the serpent's head off. Now it's still wiggling. I mean, even though you can cut a serpent's head off, but it still wiggles. And that's all the enemy's doing is he's winning. But he can't touch you because you are the champion. And in this life, we go through things. We have tribulation, but he has secured eternal life. He has secured ultimate victory. He has secured deliverance and victory in the name of Jesus. And all you have to do is do what the army did. After the champion won the victory. This is why nobody should ever have to beg you to raise your hands and worship God. Because the Bible said they started shouting and running and praising God for the victory. That their champion, that's your position. 
is I'm not perfect. I'm not good. I don't always make it. I don't always win. I don't always do right. I'm, I'm telling you, this is the gospel. But I have a champion who says I'm on his team. And he fights for me and his grace and his goodness and his mercy. The bodyguards won't let me go. Woo. Does anybody feel a praise bubbling just kind of, does anybody feel a real, can you shout for a minute? Is that all you got? Is that all you got when you understand he stood between you and death, but now you have eternal life? He stood between you getting what you deserve, and he took it, absorbed it, and conquered it, and said, now move in. This program has been sponsored in part by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.